Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel The Intellect Zone. So this is the fifth video or rather the fifth chapter of our O-Level Computer Science Lecture Series. So the fifth chapter is a chapter with a large amount of information. The fifth chapter is named Input and Output Devices. As the name mentions, in this chapter we will be going through these types of devices. However since this chapter contains a large amount of details and requires thorough explanations, we have decided to split this chapter into two parts. In the first part we will be going through input devices and afterwards in the last part or rather the next video, we will be discussing about the output devices. Both of these videos will be uploaded under our O-Level Computer Science playlist. In order to get a better understanding of our YouTube channel, make sure to go and watch the channel introduction video that we have uploaded. So without any more further delays, let's top into the fifth chapter of this subject. Let us start off with the input devices. This diagram depicts the input devices that we will be talking about in detail. The first input device that we will be going through is the 2D scanner. The 2D scanner is used to input hard copy documents. The scanned image is converted into an electronic form which can be stored in a computer. Computers equipped with OCR software allows the scanned text from the document to be converted into a text file format. The scanning process of the 2D scanner is simple and very easy to perform and understand. Let us now go through this process. The cover of the scanner is raised, the document is placed, and the cover is closed. A bright light then illuminates the document. A scan head moves across the document until the whole page has been scanned. The scanned document is then sent to a lens. The lens focuses the document image. Afterwards, the focused image falls onto a charge couple device which converts the scanned image into an electronic form. So this is a general explanation for the scanning process of a 2D scanner. Now let's talk about the applications of 2D scanners at an airport. 2D scanners are used to scan passports at an airport. The passport is scanned and stored as an JPEG image. For the use in the face recognition software, the passenger face is photographed with a digital camera. Then the photographed image and the JPEG image are compared during the identification process. Let us now go through the next input device, which is the 3D scanner. 3D scanners scan solid objects and produce a 3D image. This scan 3D image can be converted into a 3D model with the use of computer-aided design and a 3D printer. Let us now step aside from input devices and talk about some different topics. So various scanners are used to scan some small document-like patterns known as barcodes and QR codes. A barcode is a series of dark and light parallel lines of varying thickness. Each of these lines represent a number between 0 and 9, inclusive. The left-hand side lines and the right-hand side lines are separated by boundaries known as guard bars. The digits on the left have an odd number of dark lines and always begin with a light bar. The digits on the right have an even number of dark lines and always begin with a dark bar. So the scanning process of a barcode happens within a very short time frame. The barcode is read by a red laser or a red LED in a scanner. Light is reflected back off the barcode, the dark areas reflect little or no light which allows the bars to be read. The reflected light is read by sensors. This pattern is converted into digital data, which allows the computer to understand the barcode. Well, this is a simple idea about this process. Now let us talk about the best thing about barcode, which is its advantages. Barcodes make the scanning process efficient. It allows automatic stock control in a supermarket, which as a result offers faster checkouts and also helps to reduce the possibility of making errors. Let us now go through QR codes, which are also similar to barcodes in several ways. QR codes are made up of dark squares and a light background. QR codes however are better than barcodes. They can be read even if they are slightly damaged. They have a large storage capacity when compared to barcodes, and enables the storage of website addresses. The main advantage of a QR code is that they have no direction to be scanned from. 
Well what we discussed up to now were about barcodes and QR codes. Let us now go back to the discussion about input devices. The digital camera is the next input device. The digital camera is controlled by a microprocessor. Various digital cameras take various images with different qualities. However the quality of an image relies on three factors. The resolution, the type of lens used, and the lighting. The resolution simply means the number of pixels present. The number of pixels decide the size of the file used to store the captured image. When the number of the pixels are reduced, so does the quality and the amount of storage space required to store the image. Off we go to the next input device, the keyboard. The keyboard is the most common method of entering data into a computer system. It is however a slow method and has a greater possibility of performing errors during usage. But it is the easiest and the best method present for data entry. Moreover, frequent use of the keyboard can lead to an injury known as the repetitive strain injury. Aside from the keyboard, there are many other devices which are used for data entry. These devices are known as pointing devices. The examples below this topic are the most famous and efficient pointing devices present. Off we go to the next input device, the microphone. The microphone is used to input sound to a device. Microphones are used in identification process such as voice and speech recognition. Let us now go through these process. The first process is the voice recognition process. In this process, the user's voice is detected and then converted into a digital format. These type of voice recognition softwares are used in cars to allow the driver to say commands. A microphone is used in these softwares to input words spoken by the user. Well this is a general idea about this process. The next process is the speech recognition process. The speech recognition process is a more complex process than the voice recognition process. These softwares also use a microphone to input words spoken by a user. The difference between voice and speech recognition softwares is that in speech recognition softwares, the spoken words are shown on a screen. So this is a general idea about these softwares. Let us now go back to the discussion about input devices. The next input device is the touch screen. These type of input devices allow simple touch to launch an application. Touch screens are easy to use than pointing devices. Well, now let us go through the types of touch screens. There are three types of touch screens. The resistive, infrared, and the capacitive touch screens. Let us now go through each one of them in detail. The first type of touchscreen is the capacitive touchscreen. It is made up of many layers of glass that act like a capacitor. Electric fields are made between the glass layers. When the top layer is touched, an electric current flows through the layers of glass, and the coordinations of the touch are calculated and determined by an onboard microprocessor. This touchscreen is a medium-cost technology. It has good screen visibility and allows multi-touch capabilities. The screen used in this device is durable and allows only bare fingers as a source of input. All these points define the advantages and the drawbacks of these type of touchscreens. Let us now go through the next type of touchscreen, the infrared touchscreen. The infrared touchscreen is separated into two categories, the heat resistive and the optical touchscreens. The heat resistive touchscreen uses glass as the screen material. This technology only allows a warm object as a source of input. The advantages of this category are its good screen visibility and its access to multi-touch capabilities. The major drawback of this category is its immense cost. The optical touchscreen also uses glass as the screen material. This technology uses an array of sensors to calculate the coordinates of the touch. This technology allows the use bare fingers gloved fingers, or stylus as a source of input. Optical technology has the same advantages and drawbacks to that of the infrared touchscreen. Well this is a general idea about the infrared and the optical touchscreens. Let us now talk about the resistive touchscreen. This touchscreen is made up of two layers. When the top layer touches the bottom layer, a circuit is completed. 
The coordinates where the screen was touched is calculated. The advantages of this technology is its low cost and its access to bare fingers, gloved fingers, or a stylus as a source of input. The drawbacks are its poor screen visibility and durability. This touchscreen also does not allow multi-touch capabilities. All these points help us understand about the resistive touchscreen. Well, we have discussed all the three major types of touchscreens. Now let's go through the last two devices under this topic. The interactive whiteboards and sensors. The interactive whiteboard is a digital whiteboard which allows a user to write on it using a modernized pen. These types of whiteboards are used in schools and offices as they make teaching or presentation an efficient process. Well, this is a simple idea about this device. The last device that we will be going through in this video is the sensor. A sensor is a device which reads or measures physical properties. Sensors obtain analog data. Therefore, analog data needs to be converted into digital data by an ADC. so that the computer can process this data if digital data requires to be converted into analog a DAC is used well different sensors have been designed for different purposes all these types of sensors obtain different kinds of analog values all that what you see here are the types of sensors that you need to know it is better for you to know at least one example where each sensor is used for a specific purpose Well that's a thorough understanding about the sensor. Well, those were all the topics that we had to discuss under input devices. Make sure to go and watch the second part of this chapter where we will be discussing about output devices. If you need to download the notes for this subject, make sure to check out our official website. The link is there down below. Well that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching. And as always, enjoy your presence in this intellectual zone.